Parliament is wasting time uh, where it could actually be making bigger and better decisions for New Zealand. Um, I'll call uh, Dr Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr Chairman. In part three of this bill, um, in particular clause 64 that I'm going to speak to here, this is where it really becomes clear what this legislation does mean for individuals, where we get to these definitions of adjusted net income and we're replacing these in terms of gross income and we've heard speakers prior to me talk about this in terms of the impact that this has on terms of everyday lives. We've seen earlier from this government an increase of the student repaying amount from 10 cents to 12 cents which effectively makes the marginal tax rate of a graduate very high and I think that's something that we need to consider in a very careful way and it's in this clause 6 64 in part three of this bill that this becomes very clear, that this is something we have to give real thought to, because it's effectively this marginal tax rate that is often the thing that drives New young New Zealanders offshore to go and live in other countries and contribute to the development of, and, and make contributions to other societies other than our own because of these very definitions that we're seeing in there. So what we do need to have, I mean, we hear a lot of rhetoric from the government about the benefit, the income benefit that someone with a tertiary qualification gets in New Zealand. And I think that there actually needs to be a little bit of a few facts put around this claim that we're hearing all the time from members opposite. Because actually what we're seeing that in terms of OECD countries, the benefit that you get from having a tertiary qualification in New Zealand in terms of income is much lower than in many other OECD countries. Our wages are lower and there's a whole raft of reasons that probably fall outside of part three, clause 64 of this particular piece of legislation that we're looking at of why it is that we have these lower wages in New Zealand, but we have to face this reality. And I think the New Zealand University Students Association gave a very useful submission to the Select Committee on this piece of legislation, and they provided some real for some, some facts around what, a, what um, an average student income looks like. So an average student leaves a tertiary institution after some study with a mean, so mean debt of, of $17,100. $76, and a median graduate income is $42,120. Now, this, this I'll talk a bit more in a, in a couple of minutes about how this is calculated. The average time to repay this debt is 5.2 years, with the real value of the loan repayments being 90, 92%. That what we see is that for these five years, the very years where someone has finished their tertiary study, it might be a time when they're, they're, they're um, looking to, to buy a home or hopefully be able to buy a home to maybe start a family. These are things that actually get in the way. And it's these kinds of numbers that make individual New Zealanders make decisions every day to get on a plane and leave New Zealand. Now, if we have a look at what I was talking about, the mean debt and median repayment time is for a domestic borrower. I just want to make that clear. And these figures come from the 2011 annual report on the student loan scheme graduate income. And these are for graduates with less than one year's experience. And these come from the New Zealand Immigration Service. It's with 5% annual growth and a discount rate of 3.5% and reflects the borrowing costs of plus 0.5% risk that is embedded within there. But I think it's really important to think about what numbers like this actually look like living in your street. What numbers like this actually look like sh um, shopping at the same shops you do, that are going to the same schools that your children's schools are going to, because these are the experiences of a generation of New Zealanders. And now it's a generation of New Zealanders who's own, who have student loan debt whose own children are about to enter tertiary education. So what we have is a, a generation Sorry, of people... Sorry the Honourable Member. You. The time has come for me to report progress. The House has resumed, Mr Chairman. 
Mr Speaker, the committee has considered the minimum wage starting out wage amendment bill and reports it with amendment. The committee has also considered the student loan scheme amendment bill number two and reports progress. The committee has also considered the Reserve Bank of New Zealand covered bonds amendment bill and reports no progress. Mr Speaker, I move that the report be adopted. The question is that the report be adopted. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The minimum wage starting out wage amendment bill is set down for third reading next sitting day, and the student loan scheme amendment bill number two and the Reserve Bank of New Zealand covered bonds amendment bill are set down for further consideration in committee. Now, this remains for me to announce that the House will stand adjourned until 2pm tomorrow. Good evening, everybody.